Okay, we're going to make some uh, ambles today. The hunchback? She's 97 kilos. And then we're going to make the paws. The paws are the bottom though. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, something that we're on here at the moment. We'll make sure we get it. Yeah. I say it's like 20 kilos. We have to be lucky in here. What are you going to hear, about to ram up the top part of the, uh, the anvil. Uh, this will have a riser on it. Um, we can explain what a riser is a little bit later on. So the initial thing is to get it moulded up today and that's what we're about to do. So we'll turn the mixer on. Just put a little bit of steel in it to straighten it up a little bit. Well, we make that specially here for us. And this is the exothermic sleeve. So what's that core thing you say? Um, the bottom core is a break-off core. It saves a lot of cutting when we're trying to cut that part off the casting. And the uh, exothermic sleeve is it's like a reservoir of metal. Because when the metal expands, it's going to shrink. And if you don't have something to fill to help the shrinkage, well, you'll have a void in the casting. doesn't look like you're pushing down too hard there, like you're leveling it off and getting it smooth, but those cavities, it doesn't look like you've really filled them in very hard. Yeah, it's not really a necessity to, um, because all the compaction is around the casting. That's the most critical part. The only part that I think critical here is to be flat. And I don't want too many big holes in it, but you'll find that wherever the middle is, that's where you need the compaction. The rest is just support, so it can be a little bit porous. So, that's our top part of the, uh, the anvil, which is the hunchback. Um, the next bit will show you his clothing, so there you go.
these What's are that? a sand blast. You can buy at Bunnings. Yeah. And these work fantastic for spraying our paint. It's yeah. just set up and go. Um, and you get a really nice finish with these. The only reason I like, I went away from these a little bit because we're, we're using paint, a lot of paint every day. So instead of filling up a little pot all the time, we get, we get a bigger pot. But also I do still use these if it's in a small refined area that you can't get the paint to. So that's where, where this is very handy with a long nozzle. And they work fantastic for spraying the paint. And I think you get three or four items for like, you know, 20 bucks or some ridiculous thing like that. So it is good value. All right. Beauty. There's a few things we do to stop that, and you'll see that in the video. Right, let's do it up the gut.
Alright guys, so this, this is basically just a funnel that we use to pour the metal down to. Uh, we have two different types. Uh, this is the one we use for our, our animal. That's a big riser you've got in there. And that's just a sand riser that you've made yourself as well. Uh, that is an exothermic riser in, in this one. The, um, the other smaller one, we have a sand riser. And um, not many people can, can get away with a sand riser on a steel casting, but we do here. Um, you'll find little differences between different foundries and that. But we've learned a system that allows us to use a sand riser which saves us a lot of money. What, what I'm doing now, I'm just tapping off the, um, the job. So that when we're closing the other one, there's no sand that goes in, in down the uh, funnel hole or anything like that. So yep. So all we need to do now is we'll put weights on that and then we'll mud sand up around the outside. We're about to do now. Don't you want to mud that up? And we'll put a bit of sand around the outside of that just to make sure it holds in there. So they're the major things we do to make sure the moulds stick together and hold together. Uh, and it's not 100% reassuring that it'll do that, but if you do as much as you can to hold it together, because basically you're dealing with some pretty powerful forces once you get to a decent size sort of a mould. Um, and if you look at that, this is how he's closing the dog. So that's just some excess sand being forced in there with a bit of, a bit of pressure? Yeah, that's right. And that'll go hard. It looks a bit wetter than the usual sand, is it? Oh no, it's about the same. We're getting a different colour sand at the moment because we're, we're getting out of the recycled sand and coming back into the new sand again. So you'll find that it'll get a little bit lighter. Our sand does sort of alter in colours a little bit, but basically it's the same content. Um, and then we're not far off having to weigh all these up. 